All right, folks, we're back. Part two of the panel, Roger Hedgecock and Rick Unger. But first, I want to remind you to pick up your copy, if you haven't done it already, or maybe you want another one. It's a great book called Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation by Dick Morris, Newsmax contributor and political analyst. It's been a number one Amazon bestseller now for weeks and weeks. So here's how you do it. It's very easy. Go to powergrab411.com. Powergrab411.com. Get your copy right now. All right, uh, gentlemen, before we get to this uh, really uh, crazy story uh, about the IRS seizing uh, people's bank accounts uh, uh, on suspicion with no, uh, no crime uh, involved, um, uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, Roger, uh, Christie's saying he didn't reverse his uh, quarantine when, in fact, he did. The, the woman is getting out of the hospital if she's not out already. Uh, Cuomo backtracked. They held this joint press conference late last week. The White House reportedly came down on both of them very hard, and they reversed. Um, good or bad? Well, it's an obvious uh, example of the incompetent trying to get the states to not do something that the public wants them to do, which is protect the public from Ebola of victims and to treat those victims in an, in an atmosphere in which the rest of us don't catch Ebola. Uh, it seems like common sense, but again, the, now the CDC is, is going after their own protocols on Ebola, trying to amend them. They've known about Ebola for 38 years, and today they're, they're evolving their protocols. So I think Christie and Cuomo were right the first time. It doesn't deter people from going to, to, to uh, Africa to help these poor people over there with their Ebola crisis. To have when they come back to be sensibly quarantined to make sure they they don't have Ebola and if they do to make sure they get the treatment. Right, right, and and Rick, the, the, our soldiers now are being held in Italy and, and elsewhere when they come back from Africa uh, for 21 days in isolation. Why shouldn't the doctors and medical workers have the same fate here? You know, anybody who has picked a side on this, I don't know how they're doing it because I find it all completely confusing. Look, when I get sick, I go to a doctor. I don't go to a politician. And here I look at this, and I understand the argument. Roger's making the argument, and a lot of other people are. And I get it that it does seem sensible to do this. I, I get it. In fact, I've even been leaning in that direction. But then I hear the medical community, out of no political reason, make the complaint that this could actually hurt. Uh, I know that there were some reporters over in Sierra Leone in the past 24 hours that talked to some of our medical personnel there, and they said that it probably would impact on their desire to come back. I got to go with the doctors. I understand those of you who make the argument common sense would dictate at this. I will say this real quickly. I think that they would have done themselves a lot of good if they had treated this young nurse a whole lot better than they did and been a little bit more organized. All right, let's, let's move on. I don't want to run out of time for this. There's a story in the New York Times. Rick has written a, a great story taking this uh, apart uh, limb by limb, bit by bit, however you want to say it, um, that uh, the IRS, if they see... If, if they suspect something is fishy about deposits or your bank account or your checking account, they could go seize it without any crime being Not committed. And, and Rick, what, what is this all about? It's unbelievable. This is based on a law that was passed about a little over 10 years ago, trying to get a drug dealers, terrorists, bad guys, uh, because we have a law in this country that if you make a deposit of $10,000 or more, the banks are supposed to report it. They realized that these people were clever enough that they would make smaller deposits, but more of them. So they passed this law that allowed banks to report that. Well, what's ended up happening? And then the government is free to seize all that money without any charges being filed. What ended up happening by 2012, 80% of people whose bank accounts were, were, were raided have nothing to do with any of those. They're completely innocent people and business people. And when they go to get their money back, the IRS is negotiating with them and keeping some of the money. <laughs> Where I come from, that's grand larceny. And I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, let's not make it a campaign issue. It's flat out wrong Rod and awful. Roger? Well, 100% we're going to agree on this one. And, and I'll go farther yeah. than that. This idea that the government can intervene on your money for whatever reason, with no crime being alleged, is fundamentally anti-American. I mean, these poor guys with the vending machines, the poor woman with the Mexican restaurant in New York, these, these examples that were cited by the New York Times. Now, the Times did say that the IRS has said, well, we're going to pull back this policy now that you've alerted the entire country yeah, to how we've been busted. ripping people off. They got busted, exactly. Yeah. So here's the situation. Right now, we ought to be pursuing this every way we can to force the IRS back into I mean, this is the second time the IRS has gotten a big black eye here, and it's two times too many as far as I'm concerned. 
Well, we got to have the Republicans uh, do something when it comes to funding. Guys, great talk. Thanks for sticking around. Roger Hedgecock yep. and Rick Unger. We'll be back with more of the Steve Malsberg Show coming up right after the break. You want to reach us? Here's how you could do it. Social media and email and Twitter and all that stuff.